If this is all too familiar and something you and your dog are struggling with in a big way, then take a deep breath because I'm here for you. In this video, I'm gonna share some of my top tips on separation and isolation anxiety by giving you the things that worked wonders for my Labrador Bentley when he was going through an extremely rough patch any time he was away from me. Let me start by saying at the end of the video, I'm gonna have several caveats and some best practices. So make sure you watch until the end, but because I know that you're watching this and you're probably anxious yourself just to get some answers, I'm just gonna jump into the tips. So for the first tip, make sure that if you have multiple family members in your home, that the dog has an opportunity to spend time with everyone individually as equally as possible. So a mistake that I made was when Bentley was a puppy, he was my first puppy you know, on my own after I moved out of my parents' house, and I was so excited. I was just in love with this little chocolate puppy that I had rescued, and I spent every living, breathing moment I could with him, and my husband, what, thanks Finn, Look at this, this is, this is what I'm talking about. I hoarded Bentley as a puppy. I just kept him with me and anytime I could be with Bentley, I was. And so what that did was create a dependency on me. And Bentley's norm was having me, his mom in the room. And so when I wasn't in the room, it was uncomfortable. And I fed into that by continuing to do that. So if you have, you know, a spouse or a partner or roommates even, have them, if they're comfortable, spend time alone with the dog, taking them on walks, exercising them, doing basic training with them, watching TV, whatever it is, so the dog gets used to being around you and also not around you. Now for the second tip, pick one new trick every week and train your dog to do that trick. And this may sound silly, but, but bear with me. Go to Google, go to my YouTube videos, and just Google fun new dog trick, and then commit, and that's on you, commit to train your dog that trick every week. After a year, your dog will know 52 new tricks. And what you just did is you created something new and different for your dog to do. And guess what can really help with separation and isolation anxiety with dogs? Challenging their brain, giving them something new to think about. And if every week you pick one new trick, just something, it could be down, it could be roll over, it could be high five, it doesn't have to be complicated. But if you build this into your weekly practice, you're going to stimulate your dog's life. And a lot of anxiety, whether it's separation or isolation anxiety in your dog, is due to boredom. I've seen it time and time again. It's not that they are so dependent on you, although that can be the case. A lot of times they're just bored, so give them something new to experience every week. This is a stellar way to easily elevate their environment, which is critically important to reducing overall boredom and anxiety. This next tip is a game changer, and it's what I call practice the distance. You have to build up your dog's comfort level with you not being around, and this is actually a good thing. I want you to shift your mindset to not be so stressed about the fact that your dog gets worried that you leave. One of the things that makes our dogs such an incredible, incredible part of the family is that they are so loyal and that they love being around us and they are so social. Yes, good, Finn, awesome segue. It makes their unconditional love for us a beautiful thing. We just have to work as their advocates to make sure that they're comfortable and confident with being away from us. So. Practicing the distance. Finnegan, can you come lay down because this is a little difficult to talk through you. Good boy. Give your dog plenty and ample of opportunities to be away from you in short distances and short time frames. Ways you can do that in your home is put them in a bedroom calmly that they're used to and comfortable in, leave for a short period of time and then come back. Do that at random intervals, meaning leave for five minutes, come back. Leave for 25 minutes, come back. Leave for 16.2 minutes, and then come back. So that they get the idea that norm is, mom may leave me alone in the bathroom or in the guest room for 30 seconds or 30 minutes, and every single time she comes back. You basically have to practice being away, but I recommend to start doing that in controlled environments in your home when you can come back pretty quickly. And a pro tip on this, and you guys have heard me say this before, but when you come back, 
do not make a big deal about this. You hear this in every anti-anxiety video, so I'm not gonna go into too much depth, but you come back, you stay calm. I don't even make eye contact. I just tell them what I want, because my dogs tend to wanna jump up and get excited. I just give them an SIT command or a down command and walk in calmly like it's no big deal. If they're calm and they do as I ask, I give them a reward. It could be treats, play, or praise and then go on about my day. I keep everything super calm. And then that's a good segue to my next tip, which is also extremely important. All, all of these are, these are how I literally got my dog Bentley who would scream and scream and scream and scream when I was gone to now be like this when I'm gone. And the tip is whatever room you leave them in, whether you put them in a crate or you let them roam in a bedroom like I do, make that room Disneyland. And if you've watched my crate training videos, which all those crate training videos are linked up here and down below, you can go watch after this. You've heard me say that before. Whatever room you leave them in, you need to make that room a daily part of your life. You need to spend time in that room with your dog. So I come in here, I'll come in here to edit videos, I'll feed them in here with their meals, I'll do trick training and behavior training in this room because this is where I leave them. And that way they learn to associate the room that you typically leave them alone in with positivity. One thing that kind of flipped the switch in Bentley in terms of his anxiety and improved his separation and isolation anxiety was positively conditioning the activities I typically did before I left the house. So when he was younger, we lived in a two-story house and his room that I left him in was upstairs. The only time we would ever go upstairs was either to go to bed because our master bedroom was upstairs or to put him away because we were about ready to leave the house. And the problem with that is he started having anticipatory anxiety any time I wanted him to go up those stairs. So if I was getting ready to leave the house and I was encouraging him to go upstairs and he knew it wasn't bedtime because it was like 12 p.m. in the afternoon, he would already start being anxious. So what I started doing was practice going up and down the stairs with him and not leaving every single time. I kept it super random. Over time, this taught him that, okay, every time we go up the stairs, it doesn't mean I'm gonna be left alone. Sometimes it's gonna be with mom, sometimes it's not gonna be with mom. And because mom made the room that she left me in a happy place, AKA Disneyland, all is good in the hood. Oh, this lighting is insane, it's like literally, it's 10 in the morning right now and it's so gloomy. I'm so, oh, I'm a sun baby. So this next one is all about mental stimulation and brain games. It is absolutely critical that you start practicing the one brain game a day program that I do with my dogs. And that means that I do at least one activity that stimulates their mind, especially for anxious dogs because a busy mind has a much harder time thinking about being anxious. And so an easy, easy, easy way to do this is using a frozen stuffed Kong. P.S. I don't allow my dogs a chew toy or even frozen Kongs unsupervised. I always supervise them chewing on it. But if you want easy and superfood Kong recipes, I have a video linked right here. It's also linked down below. It's five recipes that have helped Bentley so much with anxiety because of their anti-inflammatory, anti-anxiety nutrients. But the best thing you can do is give them new activities, hiding things around the house or around the yard so they have to use their nose to find it, trying to teach them different obedience, simple things that you can integrate into your daily routine. And here's a couple fun ones that you can integrate easily into your daily habits because I know that this all sounds easy, but actually doing it, it, it can be complicated. So one thing with my dogs, every time I brush my teeth, I put them in a sit. Every time I get up from the couch or my computer desk, I put them in a down. It's just an easy, quick way to integrate some obedience and mental stimulation into your daily routine. If you want more tips like that, like easy, simple ways to stimulate, help stimulate your dog and tire them out mentally, in a daily, relatable, easy way, comment that below. And if I get enough comments, I'll make a video on that because I have a ton that I do. What we're doing with these tips is giving our dogs something new to elevate their environment and helping to build their confidence by practicing the behaviors that previously would have made them nervous. A couple really critical caveats on this, and then I'm gonna talk about some best practices, is obviously work and partner with a 
positive reinforcement behaviorist, dog trainer, and or integrative or holistic vet if you have any medical or health concerns. You guys know I'm not a trainer. I just am a crazy dog mom with years of experience sharing what has worked for me in the most relatable way possible. Also, I think it's important to note that you may think that your dog has anxiety, separation anxiety. What I can tell you from my experience of fostering dozens and dozens and dozens of rescue dogs with true severe separation anxiety is that most dogs, not all, but most dogs don't necessarily have true separation anxiety. A lot of them just have issues of boredom because you haven't exercised them enough or some isolation anxiety where they're just nervous being alone because they, you haven't built that confidence in them. So I think it's important that you acknowledge that just because your dog is barking while they're in the crate when you leave or they shred up a pillow, it doesn't mean that they have severe separation anxiety necessarily. It could just mean that adding some of the tips that I just talked about in a daily and weekly routine could really help resolve your issues much quicker than you realize. And then that leads me to the next caveat, which is sadly, the anxiety that my Labrador Bentley had with me leaving was my fault, 99% of it. Yes, there's some genetic components and there's some other environmental things, but at the end of the day, and I'm right there with you, we as pet parents and we as pet advocates most of the time are the reasons our dogs are having these behavior issues when we leave, whether it be screaming in the crate or pawing at the crate or being destructive. It's because we have not given them the tools to cope. And that's what this video is really aimed at helping you to do. Now, for a couple best practices, the number one, and this should be a no-brainer if you watch my videos, which if you're enjoying this so far, click that subscribe button. Help us on our mission to save all the damn dogs. Uh, but this caveat is exercise. If you want an easy 15 minute exercise routine that has worked for my boys, click the video linked up here or down below. That is my early morning routine or quick and fast exercise that really helps tire my dogs out physically. But if you're not giving your dog daily and regular exercise, they're going to have separation anxiety behavior issues, period. I mean, some may be okay being lazy, but dogs, like humans, they need to move. They need to use their nose, their brain. They need to use their muscles. It is important to exercise. And if you're not sure how much exercise your dog should be getting, guess what? I have a video on that and it's done very well and you guys have a lot of positive uh, feedback on that. So click the video linked up here, of course, link down below. This is something I don't hear many talk about and I think it's important to remember that it's going to be okay. You know, I think a lot of uh, separation anxiety is an overused term, but that's because a lot of people are having a lot of issues with their dogs, being loud or, or lightly destructive when they're gone, and it can be overwhelming and it can feel like there's no solution, but I want you to be patient with yourself. I mean, obviously be patient with your dog, but you need to realize that your energy is directly, in my opinion, transferred to your dog. So take a deep breath, like I said in the beginning. It's gonna be okay. I mean, if you follow these tips and you use resources, like I said, behaviors and trainers, I have full confidence in your ability to make improvements in your dog. You just, you have to take it day by day, minute by minute. And if you want to go deeper on crate training and getting your dog okay with being in the crate, click the video like here. And if you want to see my recommendation on the best kind of food you can feed your dog, click the video right here. Don't forget to click that subscribe button and I hope you have a beautiful day.